Hey guys, this is Chappie here with New Survival Skills. Matt's over here getting ready to prep for a demo that he's going to do for you guys. And uh, we're here in Ventura, California, where, we, uh, where we're based at. And we just uh, took about a five minute drive up the hill from the beach where you guys saw us at earlier. And now we're in the sticks. Uh, we're at one of the parks that we use for our, uh, our classes. And as you can see in the background, you can probably hear there's a, a little creek that runs through here. Uh, I guess in California it would be considered a river, but in most states it would be considered a trickle. <laughs> so uh, we hope you guys enjoy the uh, stuff that we're going to show you here in just a few minutes. We're going to go over some stuff briefly. Matt's got some things that he wants to show you guys. And uh, we'll just uh, keep trying to pump out as much information as we can uh, that's helpful to you guys in any type of survival situation. So hang on and here we go. That? I guess I'm ready now. Okay, okay, you want me to give you a three count? Let's. I'll tell you when I'm ready for the three count, then you do the three count. Okay. And then I know that it's... So yeah, okay, so I've got... Let me show you things. Where I want it to be here. Start with this. You can do this. I'm not sure how we go. Okay. Yeah. Pollen from the trees. Yeah, it's the little dance. The, it's the hey guys, what's up and girls? Um, it's Matt, with New Survival Skills. Uh, something I wanted to show you today uh, is something I mentioned a while back when I demonstrated my hiking rig. Um, I just kind of pointed it out, and I told you I'd show you more about it some other time. Um, a few years ago, when I was working in nightclub security, uh, I was in a, I was over at Battlefield Adventure, and I found this in a shelf, something I'd seen around before, but it's a pistol leash. Um, used mostly by, thanks motorcycle, um, used mostly by like uh, SWAT teams and military uh, and what it is it's to keep, they typically use it in combat situations if they have to run for cover or they're in a, you know, just you know when the, when it's hitting the fan basically they don't want to drop your gun in the middle of a, uh, a big deal, you know, and lose your weapon. Um, so this is a pistol leash which would connect at this end to the butt of a pistol. Uh, rather important gear that you don't want to lose. And then you've got a curly Q cord, and then this end would connect to uh, your belt or whatever gear you want to secure it to, so that in the, if you should actually drop your weapon out of your hand, you don't lose it completely. If you're on the run, you can, you know, it'll drag behind you, and you can recover it. Then you've still got your gear. Well, I started thinking when I was working nightclub security, I was carrying my uh, my Surefire flashlight, which cost a few bucks, and uh, I didn't want to lose that during a scuffle if I was breaking up a fight or just general chaos of the night um, so I used to clip this to my surefire light and uh, carry that around um, but it, this cost 30 bucks and uh, it like I said it's made for heavier gear it's it's a uh, this curly cue I think is actually a steel cable on the inside um, but I started examining it and wishing I could get another one for other gear but as I started examining it I start realizing that this is all stuff you can get at a hardware store pretty much uh, this is just fishing swivels, um, and then that's covered in shrink tube. So I went about uh, looking at ways I could make my own. Um, I've also seen similar things for, for scuba gear, made of different material. Um, I saw online my old roommate, uh, Joe Anderson, actually, that some of you guys maybe have heard from on our site. Joe, Joe was looking up a, a site one night of this guy making improvised versions of this out of, uh, out of the telephone cord for your, for your telephone. And I thought, that's cool, but that stuff's not really tough enough, um, or not so about it, I just didn't like it. But what I realized was, as I had certain cell phones that got outdated, um, I had car chargers for them that were, no longer use, that were no longer really useful, so I figured out that I could take my cell phone charger from my car, and go down to the shop and pick up a few pieces uh, of hardware. And what I came out with was this is what you saw on my uh, on my hiking rig from the previous video that we did a while back. And what it because it's I, I use this to hold my Gerber uh, multiplier. And uh, again, this was an old cell phone charger. I'd probably use a longer one than what I really needed, but it gives you plenty of reach. I can. And then I, made, I hooked it to a uh, Maxpedition key clip that works the same way. 
And what I like about it is that when it's secured to my belt, like so, I can have this in my pocket. The lanyard stays pretty much out of the way because it coils up. I could even tuck it in the pocket if I needed to, if it was going to be getting snagged on things. But when I need to use the Gerber, I can still keep it secure to me, but I still have plenty of reach with it. And I could actually even hand it to somebody else if they needed to use it, and they can, and it would still extend for a pretty good distance. This thing will probably get about four or five feet long. Um, and someone else could use it if I needed to be doing something else. But anyways, but I thought I'd show you how I went about making mine. And that's what I'll do now. Okay, so I showed you the one I already made. Um, this is one I'm in the middle of making. Uh, here's the uh, swivel you get from a usually get from fishing shops. Um, unfortunately, this is the last one I had, and I haven't been able to track down a store that has more of these in stock. Um, so I'm going to just basically demonstrate how I got to this point um, by using the end that I can't finish just yet. Go down to Lowe's, Home Depot, one of those types of any, any little hardware store and buy these little ferrule and stop kits. You know, you get a bag of this kind of stuff. And uh, basically what I do is I uh, find the one that fits the size cord that I've got. As after I've, you know, already cut off the, uh, the ends. And basically you just, sometimes you might need to take a file or a drill bit and then and hollow out the hole just a little bit to get it to really fit your cord just right. That's, maybe that's just me being OCD. But then you just simply thread this in at one end. Like so. And again, I'm not going to do the final step. But you would then feed it in from the opposite end. And that takes a little bit of work to get it to feed all the way through. It's a little bit of a process. Again, this is why I usually hollow them out a little bit to make it easier. But you don't want to loosen them up too far. Well, I'm not going to do it for real anyways because I still need to get another another swivel. But then the next stage you would do is once you got that threaded in there and you've got and then you would obviously want to have your swivel in there. You suck it down nice and tight. You just put it on top of something good and hard, you know, the anvil or whatever you've got, and then just give it a couple of good whacks with a hammer and that crimps it down so it's nice and snug and that's not going to come loose. What I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish this end for you. And what I do at this end is I use a little bit of shrink tube. Again, just something you can buy at any hardware store in the electrical area. I measure about them. I like to cover up the base of the swivel and then secure down the end of where that wire is. So I just measure that out kind of eyeball it here. And it looks like I'm going to cut mine right about there. Use my AK-47 from Cold Steel. I'm going to cut towards Chappie. And there we go. Now I simply just feed this down. Now if you have a ferrule that is too fat that the uh, shrink tube will not slip down over, one thing I've done before in the past on some of my first models was to uh, just get some um, a Dremel tool basically and just, and just grind down the ferrule a little bit around it and, and shrink it down just enough so that the shrink tube will fit. And kind of wondering if maybe I don't want to put some smaller shrink tube around this as well in case this nut doesn't shrink too. Well, you know what, let's find out how well it shrinks first. And uh, if necessary, I'll use a slightly smaller piece of shrink tube to, to tighten it down. Basically, you're just going to hold it up. Chappie, if I could have you reach one hand out and help me hold that out. It just takes a couple seconds of heat. Of course, a little bit of breeze blowing might uh, slow this down a little bit today. I usually do this indoors, but it's too nice out to be today. 
Maybe want to roll it. Can you twist that around for me? Roll it around. There you go. There we go. Now we got get some shrink. And I've made these for several several of my friends. I know Chappie has one. I think I made one for Joe Anderson, if I'm not mistaken, a couple other guys. And I've seen them being used quite a bit. I made one for my Uncle Bruce, who has become one of our fans now. He used to work for, uh, or do the volunteer search and rescue for San Bernardino County. So I made him one for, with, along with a Phoenix, flash, a Phoenix flashlight that I gave him for Christmas a while back. So basically, there you go. That's one end. It's uh, pretty good, I think, pretty good approximation of the store-bought version. Um, you know, like I said, this 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 one is not going to be quite as heavy duty as this one is, but uh, it should accomplish what you want to not drop your drop or lose any of your um, you know whatever your favorite piece of gear is, whether it's a, a multiplier type tool or uh, I don't know your compass, a pair of binoculars, uh, your your fishing kit, whatever you uh, want to use. So there you go. Um, hopefully you get some benefit out of this because. Uh, Buying a bunch of these at 30 bucks a piece or so does get expensive, and again, some of your gear might not be heavy enough to be worth that. But um, or if you just want to find use for some junk you got laying around the house, and that's that for the moment. One more thing I like to do with with my landers after I've made them is uh, I like to add some sort of a quick clip at the end, like I did on this one. Just went to the hardware store and bought one of these little uh, carabiner type things and then I, sh I shrank tube it again onto the uh, ring so it kind of stays put but it's you know they come in different sizes you can use whatever you want you can use a good old carabiner if you can fit it on here sometimes they're too big but yeah this one's a little too big well, unless you want to unless you don't care about the swivel even you can even just you know put that directly onto that and at the other end it would still swivel so you don't get the thing all tangled up as easily but uh Again, that's just real simple, and then you can slip shrink tube over it like I did, and uh, that way you can quickly connect it to your any you know loops or whatever you have on your on your kit, you know, such as these little gear rings you have. You just bam, there you go, and then you can if you if you want you can do a quick connect on the other end for for whatever gear you have it secured to, or like I did, just use the key ring on that little. Uh, Hoop, so that's it for this one thanks for watching while well, Chappie and I were over at the swap meet um, a little bit before we decided you know we were gonna come out and shoot our video of making the lanyards I stopped by a table that was selling just for some odds and ends and I found these uh, these crimp sleeves and uh, I wanted to uh, to see if maybe th that would work for making a lanyard and uh, so I took this extra unused cord that I had and gave it a shot and sure enough it makes a nice neat little uh, securing end so uh, that's my other suggestion on how to on how to make your lanyard you know, again the shrink tube and everything still applies but you just uh, take this little these little one of these pieces just a little round brass uh, short little tube thing it's again it's a uh, flared at one end like a little bell and we just uh, forced the uh, forced the little loop up through there and then all you're gonna do is take some crimping pliers here Let's see if maybe this is the right one it should just squish it down and secure it nice and tight so Yeah, it's not bad, but I think I can make it tighter. I'm gonna try it at the top end here. That sounded like it went. Yeah, it looks like we're, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use the front end here and get a real tight squeeze on it. Well, there you have it. One more cool little method for 
making your lanyard, and I used this little cheap kind of a spring clip for that end of this one. And, uh, well, I'll have to get some more little uh, clip ends and do the other end now. There he is.